congratulations. Well, thank you, Pastor. We want to say thank you. And um, my sister up there. And, uh, and uh, allowing my family to come here tonight. And uh, rejoice. There was supposed to be some more, but they must have lost. We need to go out and get a black tracker. <laughs> God bless him, eh? You know, like I polish his anger. And then I, I went and bought a big, long piece of chain, probably from here to that right thing at the back there. And then we went all out, and all jumped in the boat. And away we went. This little bond boat, you know, about that much water, no, no safety gear, nothing, you know, way out. You know, and as we go now, my brother-in-law, Tom, was right up the front of the boat. You see, and then I said, hey, Tom, what do you reckon? We, well, we go out to the Great Barrier. He said, oh, yeah, okay, let's go. Because we, oh, we didn't know how far the barrier was out, you know. And uh, anyway, uh, we go down there, putt, 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 and out there, going, going, going. And then all of a sudden, I said, oh, black water. Must be a reef. <laughs> <laughs> So I said to Tom, hey Tom, chuck the anchor over. So Tom gets up on the, up the front of the boat, he stands up, and he got the anchor and he threw it. And then he sang out, bomb away! <laughs> and then the anchor rope goes, right? Like that. No one hooked it up to the boat. <laughs> All they had to do was use a little dinghy like this to connect the boat. And so in the, mid out in the middle of the sea here, all of us, we were all blaming one another. We're all sensible fellows. I think we were anyway. But we're all, you know, but none of us ever thought about attaching the boat to the rope and to the anchor. And so here we are, way out in the middle of nowhere, the wind taking us, and then we're all blaming one another. And it was a simple thing to do. Is just get the D, do it. So tonight I want to say to you, everybody here, you know there's so many things that are happening in our lives today, and so many things that are, but if you're not attached to the power of God by a little thing called a do, do it. You know, there's some things that are going to come along in life. Now, I want you to look at this story. And I'll pick the story up with, with Paul going out there uh, and he's trying to tell people he, he was a prisoner. He wasn't a, a person that was, he was a prisoner and he had about 200 to 300 men. And I think them boats in them days, they had both people who rowed. They had a group over there and a group over here, and they rowed the boats. They had no sails. And then all of a sudden, nice and calm for a while, and life is like that, can be nice and calm. We can we go along very happily. Then all of a sudden, something happened to them. And this massive wind came. And boy, I tell you what, None of them fellows could row the boat because there was too much wind and, it, and the Bible says, if you have read it there, it says they, the, the, the wind took them up and down and the waves were crashing over them. They could not see stars nor sun for many days. And you can imagine in this boat, all these fellows, you know, and they were all worried about their life. And Paul, even Paul, I look at that word there where he said, all hope of being saved was gone. Paul was a man who wrote about faith, he had hope, but now he, he knew that this could have been the end of his life too, with this massive storm that came. And I tell you things, life in our life is like that. Sometimes we have so, so many storms and so many problems in our lives, Sometimes God allows it to happen, to shake us up a bit. But I tell you one thing, Paul, a man, you know, that wrote all about faith, he thought all hope was gone. And then there was a little absence, a little time of quietness happened. And then all of a sudden he gets up again and he says, hey, be a good cheer, you mom. <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, be of good cheer. And he said, and he, and he said, an angel came to me. You know, can you imagine all them men getting tossed around in this boat? And here's a guy saying, one minute he's all hope was gone. Then he said, be of good cheer. Wouldn't you think that he was going a little bit wonky? Eh? In the middle of all the problems around his life? And so what happened was, he, he said, an angel came to me. <laughs> You know, and he said, no, no, God's going to save us all. Man alive, I tell you. They never saw the sun or the moon or the, they couldn't see nothing for 14 days. Can you imagine this, 14 days, all these men, a hundred and something men to two hundred and something men in this boat, getting tossed around, getting salt in their mouth. <laughs> and the boat was really under a lot of pressure and the waves were so big poor old Paul and all these men and all of a sudden an angel appears to Paul not to the other men and then he said to them be of good cheer how can you be of good cheer <clears throat> when all this was happening you think the men were gonna <clears throat> you know uh, gonna the fear of what was going on in this boat this, this thing was getting smashed to pieces by the waves. I don't know how many years ago it was, but I tell you, I tell you one thing, one day these scientists are going to find that anger and then they're going to examine it and they're going to try to, what they put that thing that, the DNA on so how, how long has it been? Carbon dating. Carbon dating. They're going to carbon date and say, gee, far out. Gee, this, this is older than Captain Cook. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still the anchor and it's still the chain, but it wasn't attached to the purpose, what that anchor was bought for. And I want to say to this, we can have an anchor, but we have to have an anchor on that rock. And the rock we know is Jesus Christ, and the anchor has to take, and then we have to have the chain, the strain, and it's, it hangs between it, you know. <gasps> oh, I hope this thing is going to go. <gasps> but it's got to be attached to our lives. Because we are. A lot of us will go through worse storms than what them fathers went through. We go through spiritual storm in our lives. But we've got to be attached to that man up there. Anchored in there in faith. And then we've got to have that line that stretches. So we've got to have faith, hope, that this thing is going to go away. And, uh, come on, you, you just bear with me. You come in, you come in the boat. And here's this boat getting tossed to and fro and getting filled up with water. Man, I tell you, there's so much fear. So much fear. And that's why Paul said there, all hope of being saved is fine. And then they put the four eggs down and hope that they were to hold so that they won't crash into the rocks and their anchors were their only hope. So I looked at that and I said, man, this is amazing. Faith without works is dead. So faith, the anchor, Ryan, the strainer, the you know, strainer, <laughs> oh yeah, we're popping up and down, but make sure it's attached to our lives. That's why a lot of people, the Bible says, are shipwrecked. They don't, because they're not anchored. My little boat, <laughs> with my five mates on it, we couldn't do nothing but look at each other with a black look <laughs> and blame one another. Eh? Because the wind took us, it wasn't working, it was down the bottom of the sea. But if it was attached with a little thing like that, a little thing, it would, would have been hope for us. Next thing was trust. Trusting in the Lord. That's the anchor. Trust in the, and the Bible says this, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own, you know, nothing up here. What they call the sin? Brain box. <laughs> 
Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on on thine own understanding. In all your ways you acknowledge God and He will direct our path. A lot of us, we, we haven't got that, you know, that ability, but we, 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 we're trying to trust in God. You can see Paul trying to trust in God in a situation that he's in. One minute, all oh, hope is gone. Next minute, this angel appears to him. A, a word from the Lord came into his heart. Man, and man, and he, he was able to encourage those men. Come on, you fellows, be of good cheer. God's not going to take us off. You know, a word, a prophecy in the church can be a help to somebody in, in their struggles in this life. And so, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your heart. It's an anchor for our salvation. And the anchor rope that goes between it is endurance. You've got to, in, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. Because you know, there's them blokes in that boat <laughs> were popping up and down, and the, but they, they, they all they straight away they put their trust in what what's his name? Paul. <laughs> what saying? When Paul said, "There's a," but I wonder how many didn't believe him. And sometimes, you know, people go through so, so many battles, and then they lose their faith in God. They lose their trust in God. But we've got to learn to endure. Endure is the straining rope that we've got to connect to ourselves. And so with that, very soon, God's going to come to the rescue. God's going to fix all these COVID problems up that we have at the moment. You know, he's trying to run our world. Hey, but God's in control. You know, there's going to be a stop too soon. God's going to, his wrath is going to come upon this nation. Because they can't lie like they're lying and get away with it. But see, our trust is in God. And even though the, we're going to endure all these things that they're doing to us, we're going to endure it, but long as we're connected to God. The next anchor that I put down here, and it's one of the, I think a lot of us haven't got. <laughs> Is patience. Ooh, sister, I know. <laughs> patience is an anchor that's got to be on that rock. Anchor to it. And then, you know what the Bible says? He that waits on the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait. You've got to wait now. That's patience. One part, one bloke said to the Lord, God, I want patience. And the Lord never answered him. He said, Lord, I want patience. And the Lord never answered him. He had to wait. He had to wait. He had to learn patience. Patience is like a virtue. You know? I think sometimes we as church people, we run out of patience with people. You know, some people come along and they're not kind of running to the, you know, up in um, Mount Ghana, there's a boy up there that's a little bit, what they call autistic, autistic. autistic. And uh, the whole church has taken that boy. He's my best friend. And you know, the patience they had with that boy. One day, one day, he wanted to go and see his mum. And, uh, but the, the church looked after him. And he went, and he went down, he, could, he can't talk properly, and he went down to a, the, a, the, the truck where they pull up from just outside the town, and they ain't allowed to take the next load through. And then he went to them, talked to one of the drivers. And the driver took him all the way to Charles Towers. And the church missed him. They wondered what happened. They went to the police. And the police rang up to, to uh, Charles Towers. And uh, the, police, the police had to go around looking for him in Charles Towers. And then when he got to his mother's place, his mother didn't want him. How do you feel like that, eh? He went and didn't want him. And so the people, when the police found him, he was still walking around the streets. He just wanted to go and see his mum. And then he 
money, but two days uh, last before Christmas I had to bury his brother. He was only 24 years old. But one thing is that these people down in Mount Dana, they raced down in their car and they went to pick him up and brought him back. Brought him back there. And he comes to the church, he tries to get up and sing a song. He tries to get up and do things in the church. You know, this, this little fella, he, oh, he's 30 something years old now, but the patience these people have with this brother, and that's what we've got to learn, patience. Patience with people, because sometimes patience is the thing that, like a virtue in us, you know, and everything we want today, we want to fix smart. You know what? When any girl passed me on the road, and I drive along at the right speed, <laughs> I don't know what happens, something clicks inside me, Oh, she can't beat me, more than I'll play I'm down the road past everybody. Man, I tell you what, but God has been dealing with my driving. <laughs> really has. And, and I have a lot of patience now, and I let everybody drive past me, and I try not to look who's driving. And I put it on cruise control. You know? It's great, isn't it, don't you? Honey, until someone you know, you see me. <laughs> but, especially these key players, eh? Right? But God, patience is a, is a virtue. And I think a lot of us, we need it. You know, when I look at my, my brother and my sister down, that little girl, that little girl, the patience they had with all the things that were happening with her and what she had to go through, and you know, they, the love of the parents brought that girl through, that family. They, because, you know, the, you know, the love of, the, the, the children can feel the love. They know where it's coming from. Even though she was in a bad way, now it was all done through the parents and their children, that their brothers and sisters, because it was a lot of patience that they had to go through. So patience is one of the things that we have to do. But anybody know what the anchor rope is? Come on, have a go at it. No, come on, you can see. What's the anchor rope? What's this one that takes the strain? Long suffering. <laughs> That's the anchor rope. And it's got to be attached to our lives. Because, you know, some people, it takes a long time to get through their thick skull that Jesus loves them. <laughs> <laughs> Their heart is, you know. And you think, you know, they, they see all the miracles, they see all the good things that God did, but you can't get it through that sick skull. But God doesn't want it up there, He wants it connected down here. Long suffering that we've got to put up with. You see what Jesus had to do when He went to Calvary? He was long suffering. And we've got to be connected. We've got to be connected. My last one, one of those anchors, it has to be. I mean, the one thing that keeps the church going, that keeps us in tune with God, is knowing that great man up there is love. Love is an anchor, and it's got to be fastened to that rock, right, that, you know, and then that rock has to have an anchor, right? the strainer, the holder, and it's got to be connected. Anybody know what that, that little anchor rope is? The strainer? Have a go, come on. Kindness. Hey? I said kindness. Well, you can be right there, but no, it's not kindness. You're wrong, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the back of the class. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely little word that one day, one day when I get and go to the early days, I want to hear these words said to me. Well done. They are good and faithful servants. Even though faithfulness is one of the most keys to God. 
Because if we, you know, like I, I see a lot of people beyond the pastor and his wife and his church, you know, and they're faithful. But we've got to be faithful in the little things, and then God takes us and, and it grows. But it's got to be connected to our lives. So I want to, I want to ask the church tonight, and I want to ask everyone here. We've got to be connected. It's got to come. We've got to take hold of these things and we've got to apply them to our lives. Because the only thing that's going to save us in this life that we have, because Jesus already paid that price. He went through every situation in our, for our lives. And it doesn't matter what storm you're going through, what time, it doesn't matter how the world's turned upside down, He's always there. And we're going to put our trust in Him because our trust is in God. Not in what's happening in the world today. Don't turn your eyes off that thing. And we know that God is going to control. And we're going to be connected to Him. And it won't work if you don't connect. And all you've got to do, all you've got to do, folks, is just reach out like that and set all hang here in this atmosphere right now. And you've got to apply it. And say, Lord Jesus. I want that in my life. I want to be connected to you. I want to be connected to the promises that you already give to us right now. And one of the things that we're going to be connected to is what you did at Calvary for us. You paid a price that's beyond all recognition. And no one has ever suffered like Jesus Christ. And he did it all for us so that we can be connected to God. Back to our Father in heaven. So... I want to leave you this message tonight. Faith goes with hope. Trust goes with endurance. He that, because the Bible says, he that endures unto the end, goes through, doesn't matter what it's going to be, endures unto the end, shall be saved. You know, I think something in the Bible talks about endurance. If we go through all the battles and everything, those who come out the other side are going to be pillars in the temple of God. Pillars, that's something to do with a, a structure, a building up that God has promised those people who endure all the pressures of this life. Doesn't matter if you get criticized and run down and you know things happen in your life, your Christian life, but you endured it. You never gave up on God. Because you were attached to him. And the last, the second one was patience. And oh Lord, give me patience too, please. And I pray for it. And I'm, I'm still waiting. <laughs> 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 you know, today we live in a world, everything is instant. You know, you've got instant milk, instant coffee, instant press a button, and everything happens, you know. You know when the cyclone blew in Townsville way back in 1970 uh, something, there was a big cyclone in Townsville. Do you know what happened? Did you know what happened? Everybody was, wasn't expecting it, and the big cyclone turned up, but everybody was used to going like this, and press a little button, the light comes on, and do this, but no one knew how to make a fire. They were all electricity. And so a lot of people hung on stuff because they weren't ready for the disaster that came because they couldn't make a fire. Everything got, got cut off, power got cut off, you know? And that's why you look up in Cairns, up in our area, when the cyclone's coming, everybody got to get prepared. They got to have all these things in order because you know what happened back in that town for one was the biggest teaching thing ever because people could not even make a fire to even cook something. So, so somebody yelling that in. I don't know who he is, but this is supposed to be all. Hey, what's happened here, Greg? Right? Just, just keep preaching, mate. Oh. So, I want to say tonight, and any folks in this church tonight, anybody here, if you want to know 
when the storms are going to come your way. You don't know when it's going to come. Things can come and change the whole situation in your life. Accidents do happen. The thing is, are we connected? Have we got the faith in God when anything goes wrong? Or do we look at the circumstances out there? When, that, when the two were, I saw a joint, a joint, so big, so tall. What happened to them? All their faith left. He was too big. See? If we put our eyes on the circumstances, we're going to fail. Because our hope, when David came down there, remember the story? He went down into the brook, he picked up five little stones, he put them in his heart, and then he ran. He ran to the joint. He didn't see a joint. You know what he saw? A deadly target. <laughs> <laughs> that little stone went straight through the air and whacked him right in the head. It had a direction of the Holy Spirit to hit him right in the right spot, knocked him out. And God wants us to keep our eyes focused on him because he is the greatest God in the universe. And I thank God he's our Lord and Savior. And what he's done for us if anybody that needs to be connected, please, please, don't go out of this church tonight without feeling in your heart that you can take hold of all these promises of God and when these storms come in your life, God will be there for you. Let us pray. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit. Come upon our children, upon our and this fellowship here, Lord, Father God, that we want to be connected, Father God, to you. When storms come our way, Lord, we want to be connected. We want to know that our lives, we want to take hold of all those promises you have, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father God, you're always there at every hour and every time of need. So, Father God, I pray that anybody in this meeting that need a prayer right now, in Jesus' name, I pray that God will touch you by His Spirit. If anybody is just in your where you're standing, uh, uh, where you're sitting, if you just want God to touch you tonight by His Spirit, by an act of faith, I just want you to stand up in your in your uh, in your chair, in your, where you are, and as an act of God. So, if anybody here that needs a prayer, hmm. just stand up. Young people, old people, maybe you. If you feel even sicknesses, yeah, God's going to touch you by His Spirit. This is an act of faith. That's all it is. The church here is praying for you right now. Everybody in the church is praying. Don't worry about anybody looking around to see who's standing up. Just let the Holy Spirit do His job right now. Hmm. Those who are standing, just, just put your hand out in front of you and say, Lord, I want to receive you. I'm you tell him what your heart is telling you right now. Just tell him. Just open your hand up. He's there. The Holy Spirit. He's not up here in the pulpit. He's up down there where you are right now. He's come to be your comfort. He's come to be your strength. And you can be connected right now. Just tell him what your heart is desiring right now. And God, by your Spirit, is going to come and he's going to touch you right now. Holy Spirit, just move. Amongst those who are standing, you hear their cry, you see their heart, Lord. And Father God, you will give right now, Father God, the desire of their heart, what they right need right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father God, whatever they want to be connected to right now, I believe they want to be connected to you, Father God. They want the anchor, faith, trust, patience and love, but Father God, they want the them straining ropes, hope, endurance, long-suffering, faith, Father God, to be theirs to make. And long-suffering and faithfulness to you, Lord. So, Heavenly Father, I pray right now. I pray for this church. I pray, Father God, for my brother here, Lord, Pastor, Lord, that, Father God, you're going to strengthen him to you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray for all our children over there. Father God, that your 
presence will come upon them too, Lord, and bring a covering over their lives because we know that we have big angels around us every day of the week. So, Lord, I just thank you for your word to us tonight and we want to be connected to you in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. Amen.